Welcome back, students. Mr. McCoy here. Uh, today we'll be covering part three on our three-part series over if statements. First, we learned about the basics of ifs and if-elses and if-else-ifs. And then we learned about logical operators like and, or, and not. And today we're going to learn about nested if statements. And nested if statements work a whole lot like those logical operators. It's just a different way of approaching it. So let's start off with uh, what is nesting? What, is, what do we mean by that word nested? Well, nesting just means placing code inside of other code. So in an if statement, if the test condition is true, then the block of code will run. Um, but what you put inside of those curly braces is up to you. You can put anything you want in there code-wise. You can put print statements. You can put assignments. Assignment. Uh, and you can even put more ifs. And so whenever you put an if statement inside of the curly brackets of an if statement, then you are nesting them. Here's an example. Our green block shows the first or outermost if statement. If x is greater than 1, then we're going to do some stuff. And inside of that stuff that we're doing, we have a print statement, but we also have another if statement. This if statement is nested inside of this if statement. So the only way we even consider if we should run this statement is if this one was true. So in order for this to print over 2, it has to get through two different test conditions. It has to get through this one, then it has to get through this one. So as you can tell, things can get very busy if you have lots of if, else's, and if, else, ifs, and then you start nesting them. You can have a lot going on and it can be very hard to read. So indentation is going to be very important because it'll help you line things up and it'll help you see when an if statement is paired appropriately with an else statement, how the level system is set up. So take a look at this example. We have this outermost if statement and inside of it we've nested an if else statement. In this case, let's just run through it. A is equal to 4. So, let's see if this is true. Is A greater than 1? Yes. Is A less than 10? Yes. This is an AND statement, so both sides have to be true in order for the whole thing to be true. And that is the case. That's true and that's true, so we'll go inside of the IF statement. Inside of the IF statement, we find another IF statement. Let's see if this one's true. If a equals 3. Uh, well, A is not equal to 3, but this is an OR statement, so we only need one side to be true. So let's see if this side is true. Is A less than 2? No, it's not. So neither side of this OR statement was true, so we're not going to run the code inside of this IF statement, but we go down to this ELSE, and we print the word CAT. So I'm going to jump to another example where the only difference in the code is that here I'm going to add an additional curly brace and this is what it would do. See this curly brace just got added? Here was the original, here's the new. By adding that new curly brace that means that this else statement which was originally up here has moved. In the first example, this is example one, this else is paired up with this if. They're on the same level. In our second example, because this curly brace ended, that's the end of my if block, and now the else is paired up with this if. So just by adding that curly brace in that location, this else is no longer attached to this if, it's now attached to this if. So proper indentation is going to be helpful. Luckily BlueJ will help you that. Just keep doing that uh, control shift i to fix your indentation, and it'll help you see your alignment. So in this example, um, numbers are the same. So is this true? Yes it is. So we go inside. Is this true? No it's not. In this case there is no else statement for this if. This else statement will not run because the if was true. So in this case neither of these print statements will be reached and the program doesn't print anything. So very different results just from the way that we grouped our code.
Keep in mind that an else statement has to have an if statement. You can't just have else's floating around um, not attached to stuff. Here's an example of what that might look like. Here we have our if statement and then inside of it this else isn't actually attached to anything. It's not on the same level as our if statement. It's inside of our if statement, not equal to it. So in order for this code to work, all of this would need to be on the underside of this close brace. This else has to be outside of the code block, not inside the code block. I don't know why we're printing foo. And lastly, this shows how similar nested if statements can be to logical operators. This is what we just learned today. We have an if statement nested inside of this if statement. So if a is greater than 2, we look in here. If a is less than 5, we look in here and we print do what now? But this is exactly the same code. If a is greater than 2 and a is less than 5, then print do what now? So the only way we could get to this print line statement is if this was true and this was true. So we could write it with just the logical operator and. Now it's important that you know both of these methods because for certain problems this approach is going to make a lot more sense than this approach or vice versa. In this case I would probably use this one because it's a lot less code to achieve the same result. But if we had lots of more complicated tasks, such as we want something to happen while A is greater than 2, but something else to happen while both of these are true, then you could use this because it would allow you to add additional code in here. So if A is greater than 2, we'll do this code. But only if A is also less than 5 would we do this code. So that might make more sense. It kind of depends on the problem that you're trying to solve. So with the Lesson 9 lab set, many of the problems can be solved in various ways. In fact, I don't think you even need to use nested ifs at all to get through the practice problems. You could use them, but you're not required to. There are other ways to do it. Go with whatever feels best to you, but then whenever you get to the Seasons app, you'll want to use nested ifs in that, because it gets a little bit more complicated. So since this is your third lesson on if statements, I don't see any reason to get you started. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can figure it out on your own. So good luck. Join my class. Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitface. But hey, that's just a tutorial. A computer science tutorial. Thanks for watching.